In this screencast, we'll examine the state of stress on a differential element and explore how the normal and shear stresses on the element are transformed as it is rotated to a specified angle. When we say we know the state of stress, it means that you know values for sigma x, sigma y, and tau xy at the outset at a value of theta equals zero. And to come up with these values, we have to know something about the problem. In this problem, we know that sigma x must equal zero because there's no tensile or compressive force on the sample in uh, either of these directions. There is also no shear stress in this configuration. There's no tendency for the sample to be shifted, for example, to the left above the differential element and to the right below it. However, there is a normal stress in the y direction. We just say that is equal to the force divided by the area. For this problem, let's assume that a force of 500 newtons is being pulled on the sample, and we've got a cross-sectional area, let's say it's a centimeter wide, a half centimeter deep, gives us an area of a half square centimeter, and I run through the calculations being careful of units, and I find that the normal stress in the vertical direction is equal to 10 megapascal. So that means I know the state of stress in this configuration, sigma y is equal to 10 megapascal, sigma x is equal to zero, and tau xy, the shear stress, is also equal to zero. Something worth noting about these equations is that if, if theta is equal to zero, cosine two theta is equal to one, and sine two theta is equal to zero, and these terms will fall out of the equation. We find that sigma x prime is equal to sigma x, sigma y prime is equal to sigma y, and the shear stress tau x prime y prime is equal to tau x y, of course, if we haven't rotated the element. The same thing is true if sigma is equal to 180 degrees, simply because we've rotated it all the way around and the axes are in the same direction. And if we look at the differential elements, we do see that they indeed look identical at theta equals zero and theta equal 180 degrees. Now if I set theta equal to 90 degrees, we find that the cosine of two theta, or cosine of 180 degrees, is equal to negative one, and the sine of 90 degrees is equal to zero, so these terms drop out. So what we find is when theta is equal to 90 degrees, sigma x prime is equal to sigma y, sigma y prime is equal to sigma x, and tau x prime is equal to negative tau xy. And indeed, this is the case when I look at sigma x prime that's equal to sigma y, the original stress in the vertical direction. So these arrows changed from red to blue. So let's graph these equations as a function of theta. We know the state of stress in this problem when theta is equal to zero, sigma y is equal to a value of 10 megapascal, sigma x is equal to zero, and tau xy is also equal to zero. Note that to complete these graphs, all we need to know is the state of stress at theta is equal to zero. And everything else, the cosines and the sines of the period of these graphs don't depend at all on the initial state of stress. They just depend on the value of theta that you use. Let's also consider some other problem in which we know the shear stress tau xy is equal to 15 megapascal, sigma y is equal to 3 megapascal, and sigma x is equal to negative 8 megapascal. Now these values we would have to know from the problem statement itself that for whatever reason the material is under compression in the horizontal direction, under a little bit of tension in the vertical direction, and it's under uh, shear stress. In these specific values you'll need to use the uh, equations from earlier in the class to come up with these values. Here's a graph for this state of stress. We've got the shear stress at theta equals 0 equal to 15. We've got sigma y is equal to 3 and sigma x is equal to negative 8 megapascal. And some things we observed mathematically is that at 90 degrees, sigma x prime is equal to sigma y, and sigma y prime is equal to sigma x. And the value of tau xy prime is equal to negative tau xy, in this case negative 15. At 180 degrees, we found that tau xy, sigma y, and sigma x are equivalent. And finally, for this problem, if we're trying to find the state of stress at various angles at the dot in the tensile sample, it's helpful to look at how the differential element rotates as with values in the graph. So we start out at theta equals zero. We rotate it. Theta here is theta equal to 30 degrees. Again, we know the initial state of stress is sigma y is equal to 10 megapascal. Sigma x and tau xy are both equal to zero. And as I continue rotating it through, it's 30 degrees. Here's a, a situation in which the shear stress is maximized. And it turns out for this configuration of this state of stress, the shear stress is maximized at 45 degrees. So a ductile material would tend to fail at, along this angle. Ductile materials fail where the shear stress is the largest 
largest. And if I continue rotating now, we come up to 90 degrees. And here, the normal stress, sigma x prime, was e equal to sigma y prime. Originally, those vertical arrows are now blue. And if I keep rotating all the way around to 180 degrees, we'll come up with the original configuration. And brittle materials that tend to fail under excessive normal stresses would fail equivalently a value of 0, 90 degrees, or 180 degrees. In other words, this particular sample would fracture horizontally.